We're back. Subpar returns for our first episode of 2024. Sleaze, good to be back with you after our two-week offseason. That's it. We're back. We're in action. The PGA Tour is back in action. Uh, I feel like this is the quickest couple weeks in the history. Um, Going to be a long month. Uh, I believe you're on this as well, but I've agreed to with a small group of friends do a little three-week cleansing. Not the full month of dry January or whatever, but there came a period of time there during the holidays where we kind of looked at each other like, what are we doing? I mean, I, how long can we keep doing this? So I'm on a, I'm on a three week. I'm on day three of a three week cleanse the body, and we're coming in hot. Are you just doing this leading up to WM Phoenix? Yeah, Open? I want to be. I want to feel like I'm having my first drink ever on the week where I'm going to have two thousand of them. Yeah, I think it's smart. Well, hope everyone had a great holiday out there, and it's good to be back with y'all. This is our two hundredth episode of Subpar, and we got a great one for you. Before we get to our very special guest, talk a little bit golf. PJ Tour is back. Chris Kirk picks up his sixth PGA Tour win down at the Century in Hawaii. 29 yeah. under par, that is all, to win by one over South Tagala in a week where there weren't many bogeys made. Sung J.M. set a PGA Tour record, making 34 birdies in 72 holes. Sunday scoring average was the lowest in the history of the PGA Tour. This is the average of 59 guys. was 66.67, I believe, yep. and the par 73. You had to shoot seven under basically just to keep pace. Uh, on our radio show, I picked Ludwig Aubert to win the golf tournament. He shoots 10 under in the final round and moved up like nine spots. Mm -hmm. Normally, you shoot a little 10-piece in the final round. You move up pretty good. Uh, wasted him on that, but dude, it was just a shootout. It felt like four days of a Monday qualifier. It's like the feeling I got to think out there was like, if you make a bogey, you're like, oh my God, I'm dead. There's no way I can keep pace. But uh, Chris Kirk did it 29 under. I thought there was a chance someone might get to 30. Uh, that last day, but um, man, the, he wasn't a name that a lot of people were floating starting out the week, but what a week for him. If they didn't have wind on Saturday, it definitely would have got to 30 under par, but Chris Kirk, obviously a lot's been made about his story, which I I think they make more about that than actually how good of a golfer he is. I mean, this is a guy, he was a Ben Hogan award winner, an All-American at Georgia, a monster, played on the U.S. Walker Cup team in 07 with us over at Royal County Down. He's now won six times. I mean, this guy's the real deal. Six times, and he's just a talent. Like, they talk to him about, like, they get the story about how he's been playing golf left-handed after the FedEx Cup playoffs. Everybody's kind of burnt out, wants a little break. He's, he did not play golf right-handed for, like, three or four weeks and got to the point where he shot 82 left-handed, which if you've ever gone out there from the opposite side and played actual holes, it's one thing to be able to hit, like, a driver off the tee and stuff. Once you get, like, chipping, putting, bunker is just, like, game over. You might never get out of it. But 82, he's just a talent and watching that tempo over and over, man. Um and the way he rolls it, too. Like, he played his ass off out there. And, I mean, you had to. You had to do it for four days. 29 yeah. under. That 34 by Sungjae, that I don't. That could hang around for a long, long time. That's like a perfect storm. Of I mean, playing great and also great conditions on the course at the right time. Eight tweets around. Pretty hard for anyone to average better than that. I mean, maybe at the American Express out in Palm Springs. But maybe. still, I don't know. That's There's a reason that's a record. He beat it by two. Yeah, he clipped it. That's, that's going to be around for a long time. Also, shout out big news. To our good friend Max Homa, who is now officially the longest driver in the history of the game, of the shot link era, which is basically the history of the game for long hitting. 477 yards in the third round, as he noted on Twitter, uphill, slight puff in, mostly carry. Jason Zubak, Jamie uh -huh. Sidlowski, Kyle Berkshire, now Max, Max Homa. Max, let's just hope the PJ Tour can hang on to him. He doesn't start chasing that world long drive circuit. Um, also this week... Kevin Kisner made his debut yeah. in the booth as a lead analyst for NBC and Golf Channel alongside Dan Hicks and Kurt Byram. I thought he was great. It's his first time. I think no one should expect him to go in there and be absolutely perfect, not to be a Nick Faldo, a Johnny Miller, or anything like that. Kiz is Kiz. I thought he showed a lot of his personality, um, had some fun with it. I loved when like one of the first things he did, they were getting ready to go to break, and Dan Hicks goes, Kiz, why don't you go ahead and send us to break? And he goes, I told you on the production meeting, I don't take it too commercial or I don't come out of commercial. <laughs> on, right. on, on live TV, very I was like, clear. that's Kiz. Very clear. And that's why they want to have Kiz in there. It's like, you know, I'll, sometimes when guys get in the booth, like, oh, this guy will be great. He's a great personality. But they get in there and they, they try to be like the broadcaster and they become like a broadcast version of themselves. Going into that, I was like, I hope Kiz is just Kiz because that's why everybody wants him to be in there. I thought he did a great job at that. It's a different world stepping in there and I thought they did a great job in the booth, like kicking to him. He had some like personal insight on all the guys, especially Chris Kirk having another Georgia guy, you know, win the golf tournament. But uh, he was awesome. I think if he wants to do it more, they will be more than happy to have him in there. He'll get more and more comfortable. We're going to have him here for the Phoenix Open, which is right up his alley. I mean, that thing, he can get a little loose 
Uh, anyways, but yeah, shout out Kiz. I thought he was, he sounded very comfortable. He sounded like Kiz in the booth and uh, we'll see where they go. Cause I know they're going to give a few guys a run at that thing. We'll see where they end up. And they got to make a decision soon. Cause they got what us open is their first major, I think in June. Yeah. And then the open championship in July, but it was great. He took a shot at Jordan Spieth for taking too long over a three footer. Yeah. Uh, Knock it in, bud. He's, he's great. He gave some great insight. I thought about Scotty Scheffler's putting what he thought he would like to see him change to putt better. He was great, man. I love this. I love the guys that are, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't say still out there because there's so much money to be made playing golf nowadays. If you if you can be out there, that's probably where you should be. But I like getting these fresh voices that were recently involved, that, that know the players very well and know what's going on on the PGA Tour. I think those are the people that make the best analysts. I don't think we need a major champion or some crazy resume to be up there in the 18th Tower talking golf. Yeah, I don't think you have to have a major champion. Like we've talked about before, like if you're going, all right, you got to have a major to sit in that spot and you're not playing golf anymore because that's the only guys that are willing to do it. That's a very small pool. Mm -hmm. Then if you're like, you got to be a major champion and you got to talk really well and be in front of a camera and do that really well, then you're talking about a couple guys that can fill that spot. I just think you need to play golf at some level. There's a difference between playing great golf and being good at talking about golf. But I think kids, like, I think he's still got a ton of good golf left him. I don't think this, I don't think he's looking for it to be a full-time gig, but it's like, let's try it out. Let's see how it goes. And uh, it might give him a new shot of life on playing golf because I'm, pretty sure he's having more fun out there playing than he is in the yeah. booth but it's there for the it's there for yeah i mean the, the opportunity is there i think the pool to pick from is so small like i mean if you want all the you have to meet all those certain requirements i mean there's not a nick faldo or a johnny miller sitting out there just waiting to come into the booth that has that kind of resume that hasn't made a gazillion dollars and needs to continue and you working want, yeah you got to want to do that job it's, too that's a lot of weeks on the road you're traveling damn near like you're on the pga tour and if you've got it made and you're kick back and had a long career on the PGA Tour. Like, dude, do I want to go travel like that anymore? I don't know. Like we said, they're going to try some other guys. I'm very interested to see, uh, I think Jeff Ogilvy will get a crack at it um, at some point. I think he's going to be very, very good. Also, a uh, little foreshadowing. He'll be coming on the show here in the next, you know, handful of weeks as he makes his way back to Scottsdale. Um, but they're going to try try a few different guys. But I thought Kiz did uh, very, very well in his debut in there and look forward to seeing him at Phoenix Open too. Yeah, he'll be teeing it up this week at the Sony Open, as will Gary Woodland, which yes. we are very excited. Keep I talked to him this morning, said, you ready to rock? He goes, we're about to find out. Yeah. So shocking, having brain surgery in September. Um, obviously been going through all the rehab, trying to get back, and I can't believe it's happening this soon. He went to Hawaii about 10 days ago with his caddy, family. They're over there practicing, playing, seeing how the game feels. I, I'm guessing the doctors cleared him. And he's going to give it a go this week at the Sony, a place he's played well. But I don't think the results matter this week. I the fact yeah. that he's just out there teeing it up is fantastic. And I'm very excited to see Gary back out on the PGA yeah, Tour. Yeah, I don't care if he shoots 62 every day or 82 every day. Just the fact that he's healthy enough to go out there and play. You know, after the surgery, we didn't know when we'd see him again. I've actually been talking to Ben Showman, uh, you know, Cobra Golf. And he's like, dude, he's hitting it good right now. He looks really good. So I know, that, you know, he's optimistic about it. But in terms of score... Who cares? I think there's a whole new perspective for Gary Woodland um, going yeah. forward, but so glad he's back out there, man. Yeah, best of luck this week, G-Dub. We're all rooting for you. Um, and last but not least, before we get to our guests, it's the end of an era. Tiger Woods and Nike have decided to part ways after 27 years. It is going to be crazy to not see Tiger in the swoosh out there when he tees it up on the PGA Tour in major championships. I mean, this partnership, unbelievable. What him and Phil Knight did. Um, someone put the contract together. 27 years. Tiger made over $500 million from Nike. I think Nike they, made more. They sold over a billion dollars worth of apparel and merchandise. I mean, just unbelievable. I mean, Tiger changed the game. So unbelievable run for these two. Both sides benefited tremendously from this partnership. But it's just going to be crazy to see Sunday Tiger possibly in contention at a major, not wearing the red shirt, black pants. He'll be wearing red and black. There's no doubt about that. But to not have the swoosh is just crazy. I mean, he is Nike golf. Nike wasn't even in the golf game before Tiger came through there, 97 Masters, and boom, all of a sudden. I mean, that was our era when we were coming up in junior golf. You go to a junior golf tournament, I mean, every kid out there, swoosh hat, swoosh hat, swoosh hat, and then the T-dub line comes along and all that. I mean, he, he changed the game. He made $500 million from Nike. Uh, they did pretty well, too, so shake some hands, go forward, and convinced Tiger's going to land on his feet. He'll be okay. Yeah. He, won't, he won't be going to Golf Galaxy mm. or PJ Tour Superstore I don't think he's having trouble clothes. finding a deal. Steiny's probably got something lined up if I had to guess. Can you imagine if he decides to get rid of all his Nike stuff? I mean, my God. Auction city oh. on that? Well, just friends are going to benefit tremendously. Yeah, it would be nice. Yeah, keep him close if you're in that circle. Right. Well, one of his friends, 
is our first guest of 2024 on Subpar. Like I said, our 200th episode. We got our man. He was looking for to rebound massively this year on the PGA Tour. Had a disappointing year for him. Finished 71st in the FedEx, just missing out on the playoffs, but he was a member of the Ryder Cup team. He's a two-time major champion and also making his second appearance on Subpar. We got our man, JT, Justin Thomas, in the building. Yeah, sure. He would have probably rather have been at Kapalua, but if you're not going to be at Kapalua playing for all the all the the free money that's out there, what better place to land than here on Golf Subpar? It's been too long, by the way, since we had him on. We went down there, South Florida, Jupiter, had him on, but it's been too long. So shout out JT coming back on. Appreciate you. All right, here we go. Here's Justin Thomas on Subpar. All right, we are way overdue for a repeat appearance from our next guest he is a 15-time winner on the pga tour two-time major champ just co-designed his first golf course called panther national which recently opened and has a super sick dog named franklin justin thomas in the house how we doing fella i'm good thank you and how to get frank in there you know what i mean and by the way the 200th guest 200th episode of subpar oh shit big time stuff wow. for you can you believe we haven't Special. got fired yet how's that feel uh, yeah, now that you say that, Colt, yeah, I cannot believe that you guys made it 200. <laughs> We're going to send you a plaque. You can put it right there with the, all the stuff behind you. Find a Perfect. good spot for it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you got it. All right, Done. Well, let's just rip the Band-Aid off real quick because, mm. you know, the national championship happened last night, which we don't know who won yet because of the way that we're filming this, but... Your Alabama Crimson Tide lost in the semifinals. Tough game to Michigan in overtime. How are we mm-hmm. feeling after the season? Oh, yeah. That was a uh, uh, a bummer. Um, yeah, it was just weird because it, it was like it, it almost felt like a bonus in the fact that they were even in the playoff. But um, but then, naturally, since they were there, it was like, well, we're here. We may as well try and go ahead and win this thing. And, I, I mean, I felt like it was Coach Saban's one of his best coach teams um, with how they looked in the beginning of the year and felt like they showed a little bit of signs of that, but um, it's just, it's, I was talking to some of my buddies who grew up in Alabama and it's like the fans, Alabama fans don't, because a lot of them are very kind of like when I became a fan, when I started looking at school there, um, they didn't really appreciate the the six and six and the, and the seven and five seasons, you know, people see a, a two loss SEC championship type season. And they're like, this is a failed season. This is miserable. And it's just, it's not really the case what what coach has done over the year. So although it sucks, um, it was still a hell of a season. I felt like after how it started, I was looking forward so much to a possible Texas Bama rematch just for you and Jordan's side action. Oh my gosh, I, dude! I told so many people if Texas won, I think I would have had a debate taking a medical for the year because I don't think I would have been able to deal with <laughs> the amount of shit that he was going to say for an entire season long. It just would it would have been too much. It's it's already enough that they're good at football and they've beaten Alabama. But if they would have won a national championship, not having to go through Alabama or potentially Georgia, um, that was sucked. Yeah, that was going to be my one question too. Is the one silver lining in losing to Michigan is that there aren't really that many tour guys that played at the University of Michigan that are going to give you shit all year? Like if you lose to a Georgia or a Texas, where it's just relentless. There's 50 dudes from those schools. Um. Yeah. I. I. It definitely helps. I mean, it's. Yeah. I, I would much rather. I actually don't know if I had to choose between Georgia and Texas who I would want to win less, but I'm just very glad it's not either one of those teams. Yeah, that's I bet the if, silver lining. If Washington would have beat y'all, CT Pan would have given you so much. Oh, shit. he would be relentless <laughs> on you. Oh my gosh, you kidding me? Him and yeah, was it in uh, Joel? Richard Lee? Didn't he p- play there for a while? Yeah, yeah it's you yeah, do it have Joel been. and Nick Taylor, but CT is the big football fan. Yeah, Chris Williams, lot lot of them. Well, give us a uh, like we said. This is coming out Tuesday. National championship played last night. You got uh, you got Michigan, Washington, Michigan minus four over under fifty five and a hook. You want to make any uh, predictions here? We'll see what those those skills look like after the fact. Um, I'm gonna go with with Washington. I didn't stay up to watch the the whole game, but um, I thought they looked pretty pretty impressive. I think although Michigan's defense is really good. Um, I don't know. I think it's going to be an interesting matchup. I think it'll be something kind of very different to what both teams are used to or or accustomed to playing. But I'm going to go with Washington in a good game. Um, A 31, a 
31-21. No, 31-24 game, Washington. Oh, okay. wow. Right on the over-under. The yeah. hook and Washington on the money line. That's the bet. I like it. All right. Here we go. Back we'll, in time, you place that bet. We'll see how your football skills go. Um, obviously, yeah. let's talk a little bit about your 2023 season. Not your best. Obviously, I know you're very motivated to get going in 2024. What what was it kind of like the reset like in the offseason to get going for 2024? I felt like the end of the the end of the 23 season or I should more so say calendar year. Uh, I just I mean, I, I felt like I, I played some some really good golf there come the end of the year. I mean, even though I missed the cut in in, um, in Minnesota, just something that I felt like I would kind of made progress there. And then, you know, I felt like I played I played well at the Wyndham. I just did. I just drove it poorly on uh, on Sundays where I couldn't play well enough to get in the playoffs. And I really legitimately felt like if I made it the playoffs, I was going to make it to East Lake. I, don't, I just had a feeling and like I liked those courses and I just I felt like I was going to. But I just obviously you can't get there if you don't get in. So that was <laughs> kind of got shot real quick. But, um, yeah, I, I felt like I learned a lot. I, I found some stuff, at least that I some bad habits I maybe kind of picked up over the past couple of years of and just maybe not giving it enough attention and, and more so just getting back into me and my ownership of, of my swing and, and my feels and kind of how I go about things. And, I, you know, I, I did not play well at all. I felt like at the Ryder cup, I had some, some good, you know, time or good moments here and there, but as a whole, I did not help the team near enough. And, um, but besides that, I mean, I had three individual tournaments, not including, I guess, last season, if you will, between the uh, the Fortinet and then there in South Africa and then the Hero, where I felt like I played some some pretty good golf. Well, let's take some positive out of it. I mean, you hold your last shot in competition on 2023. Yeah, good shot. That is dude. true. Nobody is going into 24 hotter than me holding out for Eagle and the Father Son. That's right. How was uh, how was Pop's performance down there at the Father Son? If you had to grade him, be a, be a fair grader, you know, tough love. Uh, well, I mean, health a, he, I mean, he, no, he did not need any kind of pain medication. He <laughs> he didn't look like he was going to fall at any point from his back hurting him so bad. He was walking without a limp. Um, you know, last year I was worried that between him and Tiger, if we were going to get done with the first round, but they did. So I felt like the, the health was, was a hundred percent. Our golf, neither one of us was very good. I think, uh, I, I was joking with the people there. I'll, I'll give him um I'll give him a, a B minus just for the sake of he literally uses the week of you know the tournament starts Saturday. He uses that week prior as his that he is a cram before the test kind of guy. And the weather was so bad down here that week. It was blowing <laughs> like thirty and it was raining every other day. And I felt so bad because I'm like you know it, it, I've at least played enough, but it's like this is my dad's week that he practices and he couldn't get any practice in, so i felt bad for him that's tough and then got to go out there and play and you're playing alongside tiger and charlie um obviously a lot of a lot of eyeballs on mike thomas out there mm. let's talk a little about your golf course design how much influence yeah. did you have on panther national how much time do you spend out there when you're home uh i mean i've been out there a couple times uh since it's opened uh about a, i guess little over a month now but it's you know it's it's really it was a it was a fascinating and cool experience i i i my involvement i at least personally going into it i'm like hey i am in no position to be taking the lead on anything here i mean i i think the, the most involvement that i specifically had was like the range and the pr practice facilities just because i I saw the land we had and I'm like, and I think you need to have these things and chipping green maybe should have this. A putting green should kind of look like this just from, I mean, we see facilities the entire year, both good and bad. And I felt like I could actually bring some kind of value to that um, in terms of Jack, but the golf course, I mean, I, I felt like I sat, I, I was sitting back and just watching and listening more than anything. And I was there if Jack had any questions and, and he was great in the sense of every time that we went out, any final change he made, uh, he asked for my blessing almost. He was like, JT, are you good with this? Do you like this? Which I was not expecting. I mean, he has no reason to ask me that. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what, <laughs> that was my first time ever being a part of something. So for him to 
want me to be that involved and to, you know, hey, we're going to move this green like this to this. Do you know why we're doing that? And I'm like, no, of course, I don't know why you're doing that. And then he'd explain why we're doing that. And, oh, OK. Or what do you think about this bunker here? Does that make sense? And it's like and being down there, I'm like, I don't even know what direction we're facing right now. What's the predominant wind here? It's here. OK, well, that bunker's not going to be in play for the better players if we have a predominant win. So it's like, okay, maybe we'll take that bunker out and we'll move another one back. So it was just like little things here and there. I felt like I could maybe bring a little bit more of the modern game value to the design of it. But um, no, I mean, it was it was really, really just a cool process to be a part of. And your first time going through it from start to finish with Jack Nicholas, like I can't imagine getting much better than that. But now that you've seen the process through from start to finish, when you're out there playing other golf courses do you find yourself like taking notice of the architecture more than you have in the past like oh that's a great place bunker or oh look how this green does that not not enough yet i don't think i mean i felt like i've always um i've always been fascinated with golf course architecture and i've always been uh i I respect i feel like a well-designed golf course versus just one that they make eight thousand yards and and then they think that it's going to be hard because of that um and I feel like so many of the older, the old school courses we play or have a lot of the things or maybe the nuances that I like when it comes to architecture. So um, I, I still, I mean, I, I would say courses that I didn't like before I was involved with Panther National, I still don't like. I don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't necessarily look at them too much differently, but there might be some little things here and there Um as I'm playing or as I see holes down the road that that could come to mind. All right, some big news here from Subpar. We have officially launched our own YouTube page. Make sure to subscribe at golf underscore subpar on YouTube. Check out this week's video. Uh, Like, subscribe, do all the stuff. Colt, we got some cool behind the scenes stuff coming and uh, give you a little outside look at some of the stuff outside the studio. So please like, please subscribe. You're the best listeners in the game. We love you. Back to the show. I know y'all have a lot of great games there in South Florida, getting re- this off season, getting ready to go for the season. Who you been slapping around the most back home? Mm, <laughs> mm, good question. You know, I haven't been, I haven't been playing too much. I have, I've been, I traveled. We traveled more this this fall than than ever. But it was it was good. It was all fun and good travel. Um, and then unfortunately, with my, I don't want to say my situation, but just with given the events, I, my schedule maybe was a little different than some of the other guys. So it's, you know, this, this was my first week at home uh, for new year's in a long time, which was great, but I would much rather be a Kapalua, let's be honest. So while this past week when I've really been playing and practicing a lot, um, you know, most of, <laughs> most of the guys that I'm playing, usually playing with are, are at, uh, <clears throat> at Kapalua, but um, you know, I've been playing a pretty good, I've been trying to play a good amount of golf with Bud Colley. He's um you know he's really excited and 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 looking to make a comeback in this year now. So oh, that's great. Uh, I've been yeah. excited about that and and trying to play with him a good bit. And um, he looks like he hasn't taken any time off golf because he's been whipping up on me pretty. Really? Good. Is he still hitting in the middle of the face every single time that he swings? That's that's what like, like laser the first, straight. The first day that we, I mean, we literally we played. I don't know a handful of weeks ago and hadn't played together in three years or something. I mean, maybe even more. And yeah, he'd like, you know, birdied like three of the first four holes, like missed a couple of greens and chipped it up like this. And I'm like, well, I'm glad to see that your short game is still ridiculous and nothing has changed. So this is good, bud. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it might be when he's going like maybe one of the most like repeatable swings over and over from a ball striking perspective. Like it's, it's crazy. I hope he gets back this year. It's been a long time yeah. for him. When you do have your group, though, your crew of boys down there and you guys get a game and it's all the pros, you don't have to give us units. But like, what's y'all's game that you play? Do you have like a, like we have a high low that we like to play out here, but it kind of varies on geography. I feel like. Um, I feel like we. I mean, close. I think closeouts are the best when you and you have individual. I think it's uh, at least when they're kind of big games. If it's call it four, six, or eight people, to where you may even have more than <clears throat> more than one group. You know, you'll have multiple teams and and then that's maybe, you know, kind of a big pot kind of thing. And then could have a skins game of the low score of the, the six guys or whatever it is. But I mean, for me, like I love playing and that kind of stuff. So I want an indie, I want an indie game with whoever will take it. And just because it's it's 
you know, it, it, I'm trying to get in that competitive mind frame and have a putt and around that may mean nothing actually mean something. So it's, I would say it's generally close out, but when we get four guys, um, it's fun to play a hammer game. I, I, I always enjoy playing those. Yeah. It's aggressive. I, I love making net birdies on you. Yeah, that's that's real fun. <laughs> the old net birds are good. So four, four for three. Never seen them happier than the four for three. Four for three. You yeah. got to announce it too. I only have three more guys. I only have three more pops. It's <laughs> what's your balance though when you when you're getting ready for stuff like I know you like to go play the money games and stuff. You had to put it like a percentage on it, practicing grinding on the swing technique and all that, and then also getting out and doing the, playing those games you were just talking about. I practice a lot more than I play. Uh, I. Not necessarily. I mean, I guess it depends, right? Like if I'm if I'm working on something specific in my swing, then I'm going to spend more time actually on the range, hitting balls and and maybe using video because, like for me, I'm I'm constantly wanting to. If I'm working on something, I'm constantly wanting to see video to see what it looks like versus what I feel because that's something that kind of you know my dad and I went through a little this year is because it my swing got off in different ways that it had in past that the feels that worked for me in years past <clears throat> didn't work this year because I was in my, um, my areas that I were that I was struggling in was different than it was in the past. You know what I mean? So for me, if I, I sometimes I'll hit five, six, seven balls in a row and I'll try something different each time, but it needs to be something that I come up with because what you feel might be different than what I feel. So it could be like, all right, uh, you know, I might kind of sit there and kind of look and see what, you know, maybe if it's lower body, upper body, hands, arms, club, whatever, and I'll just kind of mess with stuff. And then if I'm able to not only feel something that I like, but it kind of matches up to the ball flight video, everything like that, then that's something I can kind of put in this little bag of of fixes, if you will. Um, but I, I do practice more than I play. I'm probably... 80 20 uh, i spend a lot a lot of time doing like distance control work it, it, whether it's at grove or bears club or something uh just on track man or, or hitting the different pins different yardages wedge work uh, that's that's what i spend the majority of my time doing and looking ahead to this season i know there's one event you definitely have circled and that's the pga championship you're a two-time winner of the of that major championship but it's at valhalla you're a kentucky guy how excited are you for that week I'm I'm really excited. I um yeah, I will be I probably will be feeling things I've never felt before that week. I um it, it'll be it'll be special because you know, it's, it's Louisville is Kentucky is such a great sports kind of part of the world. I think it's very very passionate, but it's not necessarily known for golf. So when I think something like this happens, um it, you know, the the city gets around it and I've uh, Louisville has a very, very special place in my heart just with how supportive everybody's been. And, and just, I mean, it's, you know, it's where I grew up. So being able to play a major championship there, uh, you know, my first professional golf tournament I've ever played in, in Louisville, uh, it, it's going to be, it's going to be great. Um, may have, may have to change my phone number a couple of weeks before that. <laughs> yeah. Before get, that maybe chance. hire somebody, get somebody on staff to handle all that. Is there a way that you can get ready for that so that you're not, too hyped up. I mean, there's challenges even for guys living in Scottsdale for the Phoenix Open. That's that's yeah. not a major championship, you know. That's the thing is, I I, I legitimately don't know because I've never experienced it. That's kind of what I've I've told people that have asked is I'm like, I, yeah, I would like to sit here and tell you I'll be able to handle it, but like I legitimately have no idea because I've never experienced that in my life. I know I'm going to be nervous, but a different kind of nervous. But um, and it, I mean, the, I would just say now the biggest thing for me would just be not putting too much pressure on myself and just enjoying it. You know, it's it's trying to keep blinders on and just go out there and play a golf tournament. I'll, depending on weather, I'll probably try to make a couple trips there to just go play it beforehand. That way, I can maybe spend a little less time on site while I'm there um, to kind of get rest and and recouped. And I'm probably gonna have to say no to a lot of things that week. Just you know, just from being being from around there. But you know, it is it's a major championship, and I, and I'm there to try to win it. And um, I can't think of you know anything cooler for me than than winning a major in my hometown. So that's uh, hopefully that's what happens. I would like to come to that after party. I would like you to as well, Colt. That sounds, really that sounds like a very nice time. Um, Louisville got some spots. Where's the best spot? Let's say ooh. you win the thing. Where do we go in Louisville after? wherever the hell we want 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> Great answer. The Kentucky Derby. <laughs> yeah. I've run around that bitch a few times. <laughs> Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Ryder Cup. It was last year. I obviously, it didn't go the way y'all wanted it to, but what was the experience like over there in Rome? Obviously, a rather difficult start for the team, but you, y'all fought hard, yeah. made it interesting on Sunday. Yeah, it was. Um, it, it it sucked in the sense of how it, the result panned out. Right, like it was just it's it's such a bummer because I felt like all of us, you know, we were in a good in a good spot. It it just was. I'm sure if, if we had it over, some guys might play, more, you know, play an event or two closer to the event or between the event. Um, but that's just one of those things, you know, if we go out there and play well and win, nobody ever talks about it. But it's easy to be kind of ridiculed or or, or looked at because of how bad we got beat. But it um it's the the Ryder Cup in, in Europe, I feel like, is always really special. It's um it. The crowd is very passionate. Obviously, you got uh it's it's a different kind of like adrenaline. You know, it's a you, you obviously you're pumped up and jacked up, and you want to play well. But it's it's you want to kind of play well to silence the crowd, or you want to kind of like you know, prove them wrong a little bit versus get them pumped up uh, when you're in the states. But it's it's a great experience. I just I, I know I wish selfishly I wish I would have played better. Um, you know, I just wish we would have played better. It's it's that's just the fact of the matter because it's uh, uh it's just it goes by so fast how how you're getting ready for it you're preparing you're you're getting you know pulled every which way during the whole week and then as soon as that ball that tee goes in the ground friday morning that first match it feels like sunday singles are over just like that yeah, that yeah. was that was our first Ryder cup overseas and i mean it was truly incredible like the energy like yeah. you said is just different i think the chants are fantastic do you have a favorite chant from the European crowd? Because you're one of those guys, you embrace that stuff. Like, you like to go back at them. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, th- there's a couple good ones. I mean, I know that I've heard, like, mine of I have two first names uh, for <laughs> Justin Thomas. But, um, you know, they'll do the whole chant. And you got two first names? I'm like, yeah, I know. But it's it's funny because they, I, I can specifically, I mean, obviously I have no idea who these people are. But I can picture it in my head like it was yesterday. All that first team. This row in the this row of people in the front row of the the first tee grandstands, and they were just decked out in Europe gear, and you know they're chanting nonstop. They're against the U.S. for Europe, against me, against Jordan, whatever. And I just would kind of like look up at them because it's really cool to take in and watch, and, and just remember smiling at them, and literally all of them take their hat off and just kind of like tip their hat to you. And it's like it, they just respect golf. You know what I mean? Like they're they clearly want you to not play well and to lose, but they also respect you as a golfer. So it's, it's a pretty unique, uh, atmosphere. Yeah. They're loud. They're energetic. They're clever with their chance, but I feel like they always like, they never, from what I saw, they rarely cross the line, which I don't know can be said for all the events out there. But like Colt said, that was our first one in Europe. I mean, it felt like to me from opening session morning, Victor Hovland's chip in just the wave of momentum that was on the European side. And it seemed like it was on their side for damn near the entire week without minus a couple little stretches from a player's perspective. Can you talk about how you feel that when you're out there? Can you guys feel that, how that affects your play when you hear these roars and these chants and all this, I'd be like, damn, man, we just need to, I need to hear one for us. Yeah. And then, and then I think it gets to a point where you, you want to be that cheer, right? Like it's you, you're like, Oh, we've heard so many of these European cheers. And it's like, if we can, and you can, the boards are everywhere and I think it's easy to get wrapped up in it. Um, and, and, you know, there's something to be said and it's a, it's a real thing when captains say, you want to look up there, you know, Zach's like, we want to see some red on that board earlier. I'm sure. Luke's like, you want to see blue on that board early. And it's like, it, I mean, it, it's not exactly a great feeling when you're on like five and you look up and there's four matches on the course and all of them are blue uh, and you have none. So that's, it is a thing. And you want to be that, you almost want to be that putt or that shot that kind of changes the momentum. And we just, man, we just could not make a putt all week. I mean, I felt like the, the golf that I watched, um, you know, in the, in that morning session on Friday and, and they have so many monitors and, and between the group in front or behind or, or in my own group, like I, I just felt like we missed everything. And then they just kept making the putts you need to make. And that's just, that's the difference. They, they, they did everything they needed to do when they needed to do it, and we did not. I woke up in the middle of the night hearing Tommy, Tommy. I mean, golly. Yeah. And Sle- speaking yeah, of the that, chance, that, one was, that one's that a good one. Too. I like that one. But speaking of the chance, Sleaze and I are petitioning 
to be in charge of getting people together for the chance at Beth Page. What do you think? Yeah. Hmm. We got to yeah, get creative. Yeah, a lot I of mean, rhyming. I, a lot of rhyming. We're going to have to wordsmith a few of the things right now, but we're, we got, I think we, we got an outline for it. Yeah, I think, yeah, we could, we could use some, some, uh, some, maybe new, some new content, some fresh, yeah. fresh stuff. So I, I think, I mean, I don't see any two better candidates right now. So I what's mean, McConaughey um, at Texas, the minister, what is his title? Minister of culture or whatever yeah. it is down at UT. We want to be that for the U S team in New York. Like we could minister the hell out of some culture up there. If given the opportunity, I can I ask you, I, just, I, wonder, I got a serious question about the Ryder cup because I don't know that the people behind the scenes, unless you're on property there all week, you don't see it. And, and it does come with the territory. It's part of representing, you know, your continent at this thing, but just how much energy and time goes into the off the course obligations you guys have leading up to the actual competition. Dude, it is wild because you guys are so routine oriented. And then that week, it's like, throw it all out, uh, play nine holes, then yeah. go talk to these people, these people, then get dressed up, go to that. It's like, dude, it's like, man, these guys have no time. Yeah. And I think that's something that could and should improve with the tournament, to be honest. It's, um, it's it's tough because it is it's like it, it's the biggest event i mean it, look there's bigger events you could argue but in terms of a national stage and the people that are watching the people that are there what it, the passion and and everything it brings out of us like it, it's it's the biggest event that that will play and um it it is like you said it's wild because you know i i use this example like you know i've generally during a tournament week i'll work out anywhere from probably three max five times probably three or four times during a tournament week monday to sunday and the um the two rider cups combined in europe i've worked out twice like a legitimate workout um it's just because i'm like i'm not gonna that you just don't have enough time during the day and i'm not gonna wake up at 3 30 or 4 a.m to because because i'm already jet lag and I, I need as much sleep as i can so it's you know but everybody's going through it right it's yeah. it's the harder part, or I think something that I just think there's little things here and there that that we could do better or differently in terms of kind of tightening that up because it is it's important for us to to want to play as as good as we possibly can and and I've already seen a difference from now than my first one in France so I just think if we can continue to get that trending more and more in the right direction then it could put all of us golfers in a position to play even better which is what we want. No doubt about it. How insane do you think it will be at Beth Page? I mean, you've played in front of the New York fans. They uh they like to speak their mind. I think things could get a little rowdy up there in 2025. I'm I'm gonna be honest, Cold, I'm pretty scared. <laughs> yeah, I am uh I am I'm nervous. Uh I yeah, I hope nothing bad happens and, and I you know, whoever is the captain I think would be a would be a good idea to maybe get ahead of that a little bit because we of course we want the fans on our side, but we want it to be respectful and man, they're just some passionate um outspoken loud fans <laughs> uh in New York and I'm just uh I know one thing, I'm glad that they're rooting for the US you know, root, rooting for, for, for my team versus their team. But, um, it is, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be out of control. <laughs> I mean, they give it to Americans when there's a major championship up there. They don't care. And now we're drawing a line in the sand and saying it's us versus them. I'm like, it is going to be all be directed this way. I'm worried that they may never come back. Like, all right, we'll meet you at a neutral site, but we ain't coming back. We ain't coming back here anymore. Yeah. I mean, there's a, look, there's a long time until it happens, but, uh, but yeah, it, it's crossed my mind. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be still fun. Be sweet. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, a, a subject that's not that fun. Obviously, everything's going on between PJ Tour, Live, Piff, and all that. I'm sure you're tired of talking about it. You just want to play golf and focus on that. But what's your thoughts on everything that's going on with the, you know, the potential agreement? And what would be the best case scenario, in your opinion, for the game of go professional golf right now? Hmm. Yeah, you know that it's tough, and I, I feel like. You know the the board and and those guys, the amount of time that they're spending. Um, you know, I I give so much credit to the 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 playing members that are on the board. Um, I mean, even you know, Tiger's not playing, but he's still spending an insane amount of time in meetings on the phone. But you know, you look at a guy like like Patrick Cantlay or Jordan Spieth who are playing in Hawaii, and they have to 
they're having to deal with the the what is it five hour time change something like that and be on these calls for hours and hours at a time in a day and then also trying to play golf like it's 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 a lot but it's also they're doing this because it's the future of the pga tour and the future of the game of golf and it's a really big deal and they care a lot about it so i i mean they've been so busy that i think at least for me i mean i'm sure other guys are more updated than i am but I know the last thing that that any of that even Jordan wants to do is have another hour long conversation with me to update me. You know, I understand that when the time when it's the right time and place, then he can fill me and all of us in more because a lot of stuff that they're talking about is they can't, you know, that in these meetings, it's like this is, you know, potential billion dollar deals that they're talking about. So that that's not something that's necessarily knowledge to anybody other than the people that are in that room. So I do respect that. But I just, I think like a lot of guys, I just I just want the best players in the world to be together more often, just how this all started initially before I felt like it kind of snowballed and, and got a little out of hand. And we just want to better our products. And I feel like we're getting closer to that. And and we're just so close to the finish line. I'm just, you know, hoping it, it, can te- it continues to keep getting better and trend in the right direction because... I mean, I've obviously been pretty vocal. I'm, I care a lot about the PGA Tour and the, and the future of the game. So I just want it to be, you know, the place that, that everybody wants to play and nowhere else. Yeah, you know, we were talking about it on our Sirius XM show today. Like, look, golf's not the NFL. Like, it's not big enough to have the fans divided and have half the eyeballs over here yeah. and half the eyeballs on the PGA Tour. Like, that's not good for the game. I think eventually it's not. we're going to end up in a good place. But right now, it's just not good to be divided. I, I Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um yeah, I heard that. I heard that analogy um, somewhere else as well. So it's like, yeah, that you know, we're we're not dealing with what seventy to one hundred million viewers a weekend. Like it's you know, when you cut thirty percent of that, like it's a big deal. But they still got seventy million that are watching it. But it's like you take thirty percent of you know a million, like that's that's damn near half of it. So yeah. <laughs> like that's a big deal. That's right. And when it comes to a not a very big number, like it's so it. Like you said, you just it's it's not good for the sport to be divided because it is. It we're trying to grow the sport and and something that yeah is big, but in the grand scheme of things, and compared to maybe other professional sports, it's it doesn't hold a candle to it, right? So we're just trying to get to that same spot and and having things that are going on at the same time that are taking fans away from one or the other. Like you said, I don't think it's necessarily a good thing. Yeah, I mean, there's more people watching the average Sunday night football game than have ever watched a golf tournament at a single time ever. Like, you can't chop that in half. It's just not big enough from an eyeballs yeah. perspective. But you talked about, like, hopefully we just get the best product. I'll take you to another topic, and this will help get the best product. And that's your boy, Tiger Woods. He got everyone fired up saying there's a potentially uh, there's a situation where he might be able to play once a month. You know him better than anyone. Is that a reasonable expectation, you think? I've learned very, very quickly uh, to not put anything past him. I mean, I remember when he played the Masters, whatever, a couple of years ago, I, I didn't think there's any way he was playing for multiple months. And next thing you know, I was like, yeah, I'm playing. He's like, yeah, you got it. And he's like, no, I'm playing. It's like, and then he was there. He's playing. So it's 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 hard because he <clears throat> he really can the the how his mind works and mentally how he's able to just go to another place that nobody's ever been. And he's also able to push through things and and just focus on the end goal um, as opposed to maybe what's going on. But I also, I think that he, he knows that, you know, he's not 25 or 30 and he can't just take a couple of years off and and he wants to keep playing. He's, he's a competitor, right? So um, I hope that's the case. I know myself and and a lot of guys would love to see him more, but uh, I know he would love to be out once a month more than anybody. Yeah, that would be incredible to get him out there, play a tournament a month, obviously all four majors. But like for you, I mean, growing up idolizing the guy, how much do you cherish? Like y'all play a lot of practice rounds together at the Masters. I mean, it's you, him, and Freddie Couples. in the gallery, I mean, it looks like a Sunday final group gallery out there. How cool mm-hmm. is that for you to experience? It's it's very cool. I I, um, I try to not look look past it or i mean i try not to take uh take it for granted i mean i'm i'm very very lucky <clears throat> one not just because it, you know we're friends and able to spend some time together but that i'm able to you know play practice rounds like that with those guys you know that's that's one of the few weeks that i 
have really no shame uh big timing anybody to say <laughs> i'm you know like I, i've I remember I had a couple of years ago and I hate to I hate to throw him under the bus, but you know, Stuart Hagstad I played junior golf with for a long time and he won what seemed like his 15th mid am a couple of years ago. And he's like, you want to play practice round? And I was like, yeah, you know, we'll see when we get there. Like it was a while back and <clears throat> it was like Monday. He was like, you want to play tomorrow? And I was like, I'm playing with Tiger and Freddie. Like, I'm sorry. This is just for, for, for my own well being and actual pre- preparation for the golf tournament, it does not get any better than literally just following Tiger and Freddie around Augusta. So I had absolutely no shame saying that. And I probably won't in future if we keep, keep to, if we keep doing it. Tough breaks, too. We just hang around that first tee. There's some, uh, sectional qualifiers. I remember Sle- Sleaze and I either <laughs> last year or the year before Monday, first day there, we're walking yeah. past the big scoreboard and we walk out and I mean, it opens up to number one fairway and it is just lined. And there comes you, Tiger, and Freddie. And we're like, why don't we go over Let's to the go second to the back. <laughs> Yeah, we don't. The this second is, nine, this yeah. is a disaster. It's like the Beatles. Yeah, the, the good thing about this practice rounds every year is I think the first tee opens up at 8 at Augusta. So it's, you know, depending on the weather, that time of year, you get some storms. You get like an afternoon shower and we'll be texting the night before. Like, when do you want to go? I'll be like, oh, it looks like it might storm in the afternoon. Like, why don't we go, go off at 8? It's like, okay. And you get the range and like there's freaking 20 people on the range. And I'm just like, everyone's looking probably that they're, they're all trying to go off first, first off one. And I, in my head, I'm like, I feel pretty good that we're going to be the first group mm. off here today. Decent chance. <laughs> <Because of> somebody <laughs> in my group. And it sure as hell is not because of me. Let's see I'll if we can squeeze that. off here see if they got a little slot. Uh, there's been so many guys over the years that have tried to get close to Tiger Woods to pick his brain, to gain some information. And I don't feel like very many have been successful, but for some reason, like you're the guy you see, like he's called you his little brother, I believe like, and you're the big brother to Charlie. What is it about the way you guys interact that you think that led you to become the guy that Tiger's probably the most open to of anyone in golf? I don't know. I think we, I mean, it's, I think when we just, when we get together and hang out, I mean, we just enjoy, we enjoy the the company, but we enjoy that we we're very similar competitors. Like we, we, um, obviously I'm not at all comparing myself to him and, and what we've accomplished, but like, we both hate to lose and we both like to work hard and we both like to, you know, if we're playing with a friend, like we'd like to beat them in a chipping contest or a putting contest, but also I think both willing to learn. And I think, I don't know, potentially he just sees some kind of qualities in himself, uh, in me in that, but, um, I don't know. I mean, I think he, he also knows how much I, I respect him and, and his family and um i don't know i mean i do understand i'm, I'm very very lucky and like i said i, I don't take it for granted because it's uh it is it is pretty cool sometimes no it's yeah. so cool to you know be around arguably the greatest of all time a lot and get to spend a lot of time with him and pick his brain it's awesome um let's get to the e9 we'll pick your brain just a little bit more and then we'll let you get out of here let's get to the e9 real quick and i think the question was different back when we had you on for the first time so we've changed it to oh, yeah. if you could be anybody else for a day who would it be Hmm. What did I say last time? No, it was who would play you in a movie last time. Oh yeah. Who'd you say for oh, that? Oh yeah. If um, I could trade places with Brad anybody Pitt. for a day. Huh. Um I mean MJ. MJ seems like a pretty good person to trade places yeah, with for a day. Play thirty six at the Grove, that'd be sick. You ever do that? Yeah, yeah. It, it sounds like fun. I don't I don't know what he's doing tomorrow, but I'm sure I would enjoy doing whatever he's doing tomorrow. <laughs> Probably doesn't suck. Probably whatever he wants is the answer. Yeah. Let's ask him the alternative because we asked this. You're a married man, but I don't think your wife will have any issue. What the childhood crush? Celebrity crush. Celebrity childhood crush. Or current. If Jennifer you Aniston, big time. Oh, okay. Love that. I mean, yeah. that's a very, I mean, there's only a bazillion guys across the world, but yeah, Jennifer Aniston for sure. Okay. I'm okay with it. She's okay. Yeah, she's decent. She's <laughs> decent. Few have tried. Not many have succeeded there. Um, okay, here's my first one. You recently went on an African safari with with Max Homa and his wife Lacey. If if somehow you and Max became stranded out there in the African bush alone, who survives longer based on their survivor skills? Uh well, I mean, we already talked about this. Him because he's faster. So oh. it's. That's just that's just an unfortunate. It's not like we're we're um, you know who who has better survivor skill 
skills is going to make it longer. It's literally just who is slower is going to get eaten first, and that is me. So He's I, faster I, I than you, huh? first. But you could be smarter and outsmart the animals. And Max. Yeah, brains. There's, I, I don't I don't know if I could... Yeah, I mean, I would love to give myself that credit, but after watching them out there and how smart they are and I, I don't you know i don't know all of the animals characteristics just yet maybe if you give me like eight to ten years and i could really do some research on it and figure out how they you know how they live then maybe but but also be the chimps might see max's arms and be like he's one of us and they might embrace him which then you'd be dead you know yeah yeah that's wait are so are we dropped in the same spot or yeah. we dropped like yeah you're in the yeah, same spot see, that's like hunger I think games if we were, yeah, if we're dropped in different spots, I have a chance. But if we're dropped in the same spots, he'd be an idiot and to go anywhere but where I am. And then as soon as something <laughs> comes, he just runs and then yeah, he wins. Smart. I don't smart. think both. I don't think either of you have a very good chance, honestly. But no, no, no. Well, that yeah, that's the the uh, also. It's it's I I lose first, but he's shortly yes. after. I mean, you've done a lot of cool stuff in your life. Where does that like rank? I mean, it looked like an amazing trip. Dude, it was it was insane. I can't put it into words. Like Max and I, it was it was the coolest, definitely the coolest trip I think we've we've taken. It was um, it just got such an appreciation for for I mean for nature and for them. Like that's their life and just how they go about it and just all the little things that the animals do and uh, I mean literally just the survival and and how close we got to be to some stuff and then. Um, but, you know, our guide was great. He, he told us anything and everything you could possibly know about animals, insects, you name it. But, uh, it's just, yeah, the respect that I have for them, cause those animals are so fast and just some of them are so beautiful. And it's, uh, it's, I can't recommend it enough to anybody who's thinking about it. That's and thank awesome. you for documenting some of it. We all learned a lot about ants <laughs> and the behavioral habits of wives in the wild. It was beautiful. If, if, yeah. if golf or course design doesn't work out, you could be a safari guide. Yeah, Max and I, I think we could we'd be a team. It's like a, you get both of us or you get none of us. But, we, we, you know, that's just, I think that's how it would work for us. Yeah, don't put that to bed. All right, next one. This is very simple. Will Tiger Woods win on the PGA Tour again? Why are you going to do this to wow. me, man? Because it's wow. so fun. <laughs> I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. Just, That's not fair. See, I'm going to help you as a friend. The answer is I've learned to never doubt him, like you said earlier. I've learned to never doubt him. Good. Good job. You've, I've taught you well. Okay, I'll give you an easier one here, JT. Uh, Phoenix okay. Open coming up. Best party on grass. Uh, we have the Birds and Us there where a different musical act plays each night. If you got to pick the four-day lineup based on your preference for the Bird's Nest, who would you want to see? Um. Wow, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna be all over the place here. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Kid Rock because he's just an amazing performer. He's kid. I mean, who wouldn't want to see Kid Rock? Brings great one, nice party. Uh, probably throw some Drake in there. Mm -hmm. The Mr. Morgan Wallen and. Who else can we go? You know, I'll go with I'll go with Eric Church since I'm wearing a Chiefs hat. Okay, seems Fair. right. Yeah, we got a little something for everyone in that lineup. I thought you'd go Luke yeah. Combs is the last one. Yeah, I haven't seen him in I haven't seen him play, so it's like I've not that I've seen Drake play, but it's like I, you know, and I've heard he I heard he puts on a great show, but at least I know what I'm getting with some. Some of the others. I mean, look, hey, if if I could have five, I'll add Luke Combs. Yeah, oh, add him man. into the mix. Kid Rock came like two years ago, and I like I'm not a diehard Kid Rock guy by any means, but his show was <laughs> sick, dude. I was like, oh my god, I was <laughs> blown on, away. I was like, holy shit, this is he's so talented, this is sweet. He puts on an amazing show. He goes show. hard. It is hard. So good. Yeah. All right, next one. Uh, November fourth, twenty twenty two, is a very special day. Your wedding day. Jordan Spieth, best man. I want you to grade. How he was as a best man. I hate to do this, but man, he crushed it. I'll give him I'll give him an A plus. He yeah, he uh didn't lose the rings, which as no you know Jordan, that's always on the table. Um had a great speech, didn't you know, didn't throw me under the bus, but also had a, a few subtle jabs in there. Um 
Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think. Uh, he had a great, a great opening line to his speech. It was something about like, you know, what's the line from Wedding Crashers? You know, they say love is is one's. Um, when you take the early flight home from San Diego. <laughs> no, what the heck? What does he say? He says like they always say that like loves is one something and and their counterpart or like their soulmate or and their counterpart of the other, or whatever like that. And he's like, and I've always known that to be true for Justin and I, like it was just a great, <laughs> great opening. I totally obviously botched the, the line, but it was, it was funny, but I, I got to give him an A plus. He did well. From what I remember, he did a great job, but I was also staying with <laughs> kids and Gary. So I don't remember everything. Probably more than kids did. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Uh, okay, Justin, I got a, I got a true or false for you here. Um, at some point in this season, we can expect you to work the following phrase onto the broadcast. What a shot by me. You know the line. True. Can yeah, we get it in? Yes. in there. So good, good right? I got to throw that in there. Yeah. Well, yeah, wait till the timing's right, but I feel like you'll have a lot of opportunities for that. Get the, We need to make that line worldwide. It's too good. I agree. I'm in. Okay. Bet. All right. Next one. We're going to go back because I saw recently Smiley Kaufman did something talking about, you know, y'all spring break trip and everything. But now all four of you are married. Three of you have kids. You're not as young as you once were. So say we put the band back together. Who would thrive most in a spring break party situation? And who would be the worst of the four of you? <laughs> mm. Um... I mean, I, I'm sorry to do this to him, but I mean, Smiley is just as it's something's going to hit him. He, he's going to uh, he's going to have to, like, call a doctor, have to get an <laughs> IV or like something. Something's going to happen to him. And like he, he'll be there and, and you may just not get him till seven or eight that night. But you're it, it just it'd be tough. It'd be tough to get him for for three or four more days in a row like that. Uh, sorry, Smiley. I love you. But um I love it's, it. That's it's so great. It is. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, I think Rick would definitely be the most consistent. I think you'll know what you'll get with them. He's probably, you know, he's going to be the kind of the one hanging in here. Um, it's, and Jordan and I, we, we have a lot of this in us. We, you don't, you don't really, so it's kind of whoever hits this peak and, and stays up there. Um, but uh, he, he's pretty good at those kind of trips. So I, I, I hate to do it, but I'll, maybe I'll give it to him since I can't choose myself. Fair. Well, Instagram would love it if that does ever happen again. I can tell you that. You should wait till you're all like 45. Yeah, and be like, all right, we're going to it's 830. <laughs> Smiley's asleep. <laughs> Jordan's doing a crossword puzzle. We're going to probably just hang it up. <laughs> I'm, I'm it's good with me. That sounds like a hell of a night, by the way. All right. My last one. We're going to bring you back. I think you're the only guy, the last guy we've done this with, but mm -hmm. we, you're a hip hop guy. We like to oh, bring you some lyrics and you explain them to us because we don't know any, you know, we're stupid and we need you to explain this. As we went, by the way, I scoured the internet and 99% of the funny stuff, not usable, wasn't going to put you in that situation. So I got you a fairly easy one. Just want to see if the skills are still sharp. Okay. This fr comes from our guy, the wordsmith of our generation, Two Chains. Okay. He says, My crib's so big, a dinosaur can run through the shit. I'm a shark, you a tuna fish. What's that mean? Yeah, I mean, it's just his house is so big that it's it's not like saying a cat, you know, a cat or a dog or even a horse could run through it. It is so incredibly large that a dinosaur could run through his house. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, and then again, what he, he is a shark, mm -hmm. which is, you know, you could maybe compare that to a, the, the lion of the uh, of the safari world Good one. and. And everybody else is a tuna fish. And I'm sorry, but I'm taking a, a shark in a battle against a tuna fish. If tuna fish is everyone else, two changes the shark, two changes the alpha. Yeah, the like, that's house. good. Animal guy, Justin, you explained that. That was good. I get it now. So we used to do that segment. It was called What Do You Mean? Yeah. On our mm -hmm. Serious X show. Segment. It's great. We got to bring it back. Yeah, yeah. Got some great ones. You and I, Scott yeah, Harrington. I think so, too. There's only a few guys that can do it, though. And I also only... think that Every quote that you've picked is two chains. It's two chains. <laughs> I got a few non-users here. I was gonna go with she got a big booty, so I call her big booty. I feel like that was too easy. You know what I mean? But yeah. ninety-nine percent yeah. of the other ones you can't use. 
Yeah, no, that's true. That is the best. I love that. One. All right, last one. Better trash talker of the group: Gary Woodland, Kevin Kisner, Charlie Woods. <laughs> um. Uh, I think Gary's sneakier. Wow. But, but. Kids just it. Yeah, kids is just because it's you know I feel like it's just kind of all he's got. He's like I'm just gonna. <laughs> it's all I got. Talk a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. How, real quick though, before we let you go, he's making his debut on TV. He's in the booth this week down at Capitol. How do you think he's gonna do? Uh, you know, I think he's gonna do well. I think it's. I, I'm sure, as you know, like it's. I'm sure it's an adjustment or it's a. I think you know quickly, right, whether somebody is is comfortable doing it or not. And I think, at least, I found whatever the you know one time I did it. It's like I'm just this is what I do all the time. Is I'm I'm watching golf and I'm just calling it as I see it. And it's a course he's played and like he knows the golf course and knows the the subtleties of it. So I mean, I think he's gonna do well. I mean, I, I hopefully if he enjoys it, then uh, that's one thing. But um. I'm not. I'm not ready to just get rid of kids like that. I, I, I still want him out on tour. You I think agree. he'll be as much of a natural as Marshawn Lynch was. I mean, I feel like he was uh, born you know, for golf. I'm going to be honest. I think he's going to be a little less high than Marshawn Lynch was because I don't. And I think he's going to have a little bit better idea of what's going on in golf and probably less f bombs on live TV. Would it be hard to not be lower from what I gathered watching the old F. I was like that guy. He's, you are correct. He's in the stratosphere. This is it was beautiful though. Describing a par 5. Shit, that's a whole lot of God, yards. That's a lot of yards. <laughs> Like, yeah, fuck, it is a lot of yards. That's a good call. <laughs> well, JT, man, you're the best. Thank you for being our first guest of 2024. Best of luck this season, man. We're looking for big things from you. Thanks, boys. Appreciate it. All right, that was Justin Thomas joining us on Subpar. Always fun to sit down with him. I expect massive things from him this year. I mean, I know we're, we're fans of his, we're friends of his, but I don't expect him to have a repeat of what happened in 2023. This guy's going to go out there. He's going to play well. He's more determined than ever. And I'd have to think, I, I sh I'm going to be there, but I cannot wait to see the reception he gets at Valhalla for the PGA Championship this year. Yeah, I mean, that's like dream scenario. If he, like, we talked to him about it. You know, I don't know how I'll handle my nerves. It's never happened before, but I mean, that's the ultimate dream, I think, as a golfer to win a major championship in your hometown. But I think this year, like we've talked about this before. If you play golf for that long, as long as Justin Thomas has, and you're professional, and back down to the amateur, even the junior golf rank, dude, it's hard to go through there and never have a year where things just don't click. Like it, there's 71st. so few guys you can look <laughs> at and be like, he's never struggled. He's always been top ten in the world since he got out there. There's a couple guys, and even when you look at like the greats, there's years where they recess. And I think like you know, just tightening things up in his swing, maybe going back to basics, and also just kind of like a little shot in the arm. Like, dude, you know, he's a world, world-class talent, but it's not just, there's no guarantees in the game of golf. And if Justin Thomas can have a bad year, then damn near anybody in the world can have a bad year. And as bad as, I mean, 71st, there's a lot of dudes that would be like, I sign up for that every year for the rest of my life, and I would be thrilled yeah. to have it. And, it, you know, it gets talked about in the media, like it was, oh my God, and he's, you know, you can barely play anymore. It's like, dude, he's going to be just fine. A lot of things I'm worried about in the world. Justin Thomas playing good golf ain't one of them. Um, I love that he said out of the spring break, boys, that Smiley Kaufman would struggle the most. I think a new 2.0 spring break would be, could look a lot different than it did back in the day, although they did revolutionize the game with the shot tracker on the iPhone. That was always my yeah. favorite. But my great, favorite stuff. great to sit down with JT. Wish him best of luck in 2024. All right, let's get to some gambling. Why it not? Is, it's the day after the national championship. We don't know who. Which won. way are you going on that? Because we could look like idiots or we could look like geniuses. I'll just give you mine. I'm betting the I'm betting the under and I'm betting it heavy. Michigan, run the ball over and over, play as slow as humanly possible, keep Penix off the field. That's my bet. I should say I am not warm right now in oh the boy. betting front. Well, but I've been on this for a while, so I'm going under the fifty six. Well, I said before our break, it was gonna be Texas, Alabama in the final. So how'd I do? Good call. Yes. So obviously not really warm as well. I can't pick Washington. I got this one guy out there. I don't even want to give him I don't even give him credit. I don't want to say his name on here. Mm. It's too nice to him. And he just annoys me about Washington. So therefore, I'm going Michigan minus five. I think you found the one obnoxious Washington mm -hmm. thing. Because that's the thing about Washington. I was like, no one hates them. They're just nice guys from the Northwest. Their football team, you know, they haven't been good enough for long enough for them to really have like an annoying fan base. And I just I'm kinda I mean, 
in my heart, I think I want Washington. They're kind of the underdog. Michigan's been there. They've been around. They're kind of like the, you know, a lot of people picking them to win a national title at the beginning of the year. But in my heart, I think Michigan wins the thing. But Defense, it doesn't really matter. Just don't score a ton of points. Defense wins championships. So let's go Michigan. Uh, let's get to the Sony Open. We've got a very nice field he heading over there. Ludwig Aubert is your favorite after his incredible, what, 45th top 50, place finish for you? Top 50 for the kid. He is 12-1 to 1 as your favorite. For me, I'm going to a guy who's just been a monster around here. He won, and I believe his fifth start on the PGA Tour back in his rookie year. He can roll his rock. He's one of the best iron players on the planet. Georgia Bulldogs, they're pretty good on the PGA Tour. Give me Russell Henley, 22-1. to 1. Monster. Monster at this tournament. I feel like every time I think of this tournament, like he's one of the first guys that comes to mind. He plays it so well out there. Uh, not to just hop on the Georgia bandwagon, although there's 50 of them out there, but I'm picking one as well. He's a little further down, 25-1. to 1. But give me Brian Harmon. I like guys that play the week before and kind of knock a little bit of the rust off. Also, hit it in the fairway, wedge it, and putt it. That's kind of the formula around this place. I mean, who's better than that? Also plays pretty decent in the wind. So I'm going to take B. Harm, 25-1. He's the French Bulldog of the Bulldog. Yeah, family. yeah. He's like the, yeah, just the miniature version. But Frenchy. feisty as a mother. You know Frenchy would I mean? be a good little name for him. Yeah, he's not. I kind of like that. <laughs> I little, like baby, it little baby dog. Um, as far as the dark horse, I know we're both on the same page here, and we didn't touch on it at the start, and there's a reason for it. Here we go. We had our Whisper Rock Pro Scratch, our first ever Whisper Rock Pro Scratch. 15 guys threw in some money. You played with your man, Drew Kittleson. I yeah. played with Brandon Harkins. Well, Ches Reevy didn't need a partner. Okay, him and his caddy, Brady Stockton, went out there. They shot 21 under for two days, best ball, all the way back at Whisper Rock. Green's running 13. Freezing balls. Not warm, and they won by five. Chess shot 64-63 on his own ball, which would have been good enough for a one-shot victory over Nate Lashley and Ben Marsh. So there, because of that, we are both, as a dark horse, going Ches Reevy. And depending on where you get it, you can get him as good as 350 to one. Yeah, say no more. Uh, the fact that he would have won that golf tournament by himself. And to say he shot 64, 63, that sounds good at any time. It was freezing. There was a little bit of wind. The course was all the way back. The greens were bouncy. Like, it wasn't your normal 64, 63. But when Chez gets going like this, saw it a few years back uh, at the Twin Fin when we had it here, and he made double eagle on 18, and he shot a million under by himself, and I was pumping him then. And that's when he went out there to Sony and, like, hold out three times in the first round. like Over more than, 100 yards. Over 100 yards, three hole outs. I'm not saying he's going to do that this time, but when Chez gets running like this, on top of that, this golf course is perfect for him. 7,000 yards. like he is, He's hitting it perfect. He's putting it, all the things. I'm 100% in on Chez. He has Please two, play good so we don't look like idiots. I know. He has two career top tens there. I mean, he likes to draw it. The final stretch there is just perfect for a drawer of the golf ball. I like him to play well, but... We've, we've seen this movie before. We I've hype these it. guys after we see them and we play with them, and then they go out and they play like shit. So don't do it. But you mentioned those three hole outs in one round. I was playing that day, and you go across those boards, and you're like, oh, boom, Ches Reevy holds out from 146. Ches Reevy holds out from 128. Ches Reevy holds out from 126. But Jesus Christ, what is going on? And the last hole he played leading up to that, he holed out a five iron on a par five for double eagle. I mean, the dude holds out more than anyone in the world, hits flags more than anyone in the world. He doesn't even know how many hole in ones he's had. He's like, yo, how many you got? He's like, I don't know, like 27, 28. I don't know. I kind of lost track. I'm like, eh. okay, you're the only dude that doesn't know how many hole in ones he's got. But historically, when he's been playing good leading up to an event, like it carries over. So if he gets, if he has any semblance of that same time of for, type of form, this week at Sony, I love him, especially at those numbers. A top 10 bet on Chez would be, I feel like. 22 to 1, top 10 Unbelievable bet. good bet this week. If not, Chez will refund your money. Kidding, yep. exactly. kidding. Don't we'll hold give you to his that. Venmo. Yeah. yeah. All right, NFL playoffs also start this weekend. My Cowboys against the Packers, minus 7.5. That's my favorite bet of the week. What a draw. I don't even have any NFL in front of me, That's but fun. I do think the Cowboys have an unbelievable draw with the way things shook out. The Eagles falling apart. There's they a lot suck. of weird stuff going on uh, in the NFL right now, but. Yeah, if I had to lean, Cowboys at home are a beast. Um, it's setting up to be a very emotional oh, postseason. It could be you're you're in the situation I was in last year in college football play. I was like, this could be best thing in the history, or it also could just rip my heart out. You know which way it no, is. Y'all were a me. great underdog story. Like we're just expected to We win. almost won that game too. To lose it as yeah. close as we did made it hurt even more, you know. Just missed. Oh, fuck, we had them figured at the end. All right. Well, thanks to everyone out there for listening. Like I said, hope everyone had a great holiday. I cannot believe when we started this thing, we would get to 200 episodes. Over. And it's all because of y'all. This is fantastic. Really appreciate it. Hope y'all continue to enjoy to listen to us idiots. But that's going to do it for us. We'll talk to you on next week's Subpar.